Welcome to another AP Chemistry video. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to calculate percent mass of a compound, but also how to go backwards from the percent mass and turn that into something that we call an empirical formula. So we'll learn about empirical formulas in this video, and we're also going to learn about how to go from an empirical formula to a molecular formula. So this is a very important skill, and it does pop up every, no, every so often on the AP Chemistry exam. Now, first of all, we're going to do a little bit of review, something we learned in a previous video about how to calculate the percent mass of a compound. Now, you might recall that if we have a formula, and let's just say it's something like caffeine, which a lot of people uh, enjoy uh, partaking of, well, the way that we find the percent mass of that is to start by calculating its molecular mass. And so we know that for uh, carbon, we have eight atoms of that. Every carbon has a mass of about 12 AMU, so that's 96. Every hydrogen is about 1.0, so that's about 10.0. For nitrogen, uh, we have four of those at about 14 apiece, so that's 56 units. And there are two oxygens at about 16 apiece, so that's 32 AMU. Well, we add these uh, products together, and we find that the total molecular mass of caffeine is about 194.0 atomic mass units. And so to find the percentage by mass for each of the indiv individual elements, we take each of the products that we got and divide it by the total, and of course multiply that by 100. So in the case of carbon, we take 96 and divide it by 194, and we get 49.5% carbon. In the case of hydrogen, we take 10 divided by 194 and times that by 100, and you get about 5.2% hydrogen. For nitrogen, we do 56 divided by 194, and that's about 28.9%. And for oxygen, it's to be 32 divided by 194, and that's about 16.5%. And hopefully, if we did everything right, all the percentages will add up to 100 or something very, very close to it. And as you can see, it does. It looks like if I add these percentages together, I get something that is, looks like about 100.1%. Like I said, it's very close. As long as it's very close to 100%, that's, that's a good sign. Well, is it possible for us to take a percentage composition, something like this data right here, and then go backwards from that, and calculate a formula. You know, in the laboratory, that would be very useful to do because there are some uh, chemical analyses that we can do whereby we can take a sample of something, figure out the percentage of, you know, carbon, the percentage of hydrogen, and so forth, and then take that and figure out the formula. And as it turns out, yes, there is a nice way to do that. Let me show you how it's done. We're going to take the same data that we just got here. We're going to say it's caffeine and pretend that we don't know the formula, even though I just told you the formula. We're just going to take that percentage analysis here with the 49.5% carbon and 5.2% hydrogen and so on, and we're going to find the empirical formula of caffeine. Now, the first thing that we have to do is realize that when we say percent, that means percent by mass. And so that means out of 100 grams, we're going to say that 49.5 grams of that are carbon, 5.2 grams are hydrogen, 28.9 grams are nitrogen, and 16.5 grams are oxygen. So we're going to basically take those percentages and call them grams. So we're going to write those four down. Now, the next thing we do is take all of these gram values that we've just written down and convert them to moles using the atomic mass from the periodic table. So in the case of carbon, you know, we're going to put uh, one mole over 12 grams, and we get that that's 4.125 moles. For hydrogen, it's about 1.01 grams, and so that's about 5.149 moles. For nitrogen, it's one mole for every 14 grams, so that's 2.064 moles. For oxygen, it's very close to 16 grams. So we divide that, 1.031 moles. Now we've converted all these gram values to moles. 
The next thing that we want to do is take all four or all of these mole values that we've just gotten and divide them all by the smallest of those numbers that you got. So if we look at these four mole values, the smallest one is the 1.031. So we're going to divide all four of those by that smallest number. We're going to divide them all by 1.031. And so if you punch these into your calculator, you get that the value for carbon here is 4.00. For hydrogen, when you divide these out, you get that it is about 4.99. That sounds very close to 5, doesn't it? And then for nitrogen, you divide these out, it's very close to 2.00. And then for oxygen, our last one, of course, that's just going to be 1. Well, guess what? These are the subscripts. So it's C4, H5, that's very, very close to 5, N2, O1, or just O. So that is the empirical formula of caffeine. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hang on a second. That's not the formula that we had a few minutes ago on the screen when we said, you know, here's caffeine. This is not the formula. And that's right. This is what's called the empirical formula. You see, the empirical formula is a formula for a compound that represents the lowest common ratio of the atoms of all the elements in that compound. It's, it's kind of like a formula that's been reduced down to lowest terms. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If we have a, a, a molecular formula, you know, the real formula of glucose is C6H12O6. Well, the empirical formula is just taking that and reducing it down to lowest terms. So you can take all these subscripts and divide them by a, uh, I believe it's a greatest, or a, uh, a greatest common factor of six, and you divide that down, it would be C. H2O. So that's the empirical formula of glucose. You just reduce everything down to lowest terms. You know, N2H4 is a molecular formula for hydrazine. And when we reduce it to lowest terms, you, you can divide both of these by two and you get NH2. That's the empirical formula. Now, if we have water, that's the molecular formula for water. You can't really reduce that down anymore. So this is a case where the empirical formula is actually the same as the molecular formula, H2O. Or if we have P4O10, tetraphosphorus sodic oxide, we can divide both of those subscripts by two and get P2O5 as the empirical formula. Well, we've just gotten the empirical formula for caffeine. How can we figure out what the molecular formula is. Well, there's one more step, okay? Here is how we do that. Let's say that the empirical formula for caffeine is C4H5N2O, as it is. If it is determined that the molecular mass of caffeine is 194.0 AMU, what is the molecular, uh, that should say the molecular formula of caffeine? So we're going to take the empirical formula that we just got, and we're going to find the mass of that using the periodic table. So, you know, four carbons at 12 apiece, that, that's 48. Then five H's, that's about five more. That gets us up to about, you know, 48, five is about 53. We have uh, two nitrogens at 14 apiece, that's another 28. And then one oxygen at 16, that's about 97 atomic mass units. So now what we're going to do is we're going to divide the molecular mass, 194, by the empirical formula mass that we just got, the 97. So, you know, this number here divided by that number. And when we divide those out, we're going to get a multiplier, a factor. And the factor is a nice whole number. It's, it's 2. And that tells us that we need to take the empirical formula and multiply it by 2 to get the molecular formula. And lo and behold, when you do that, you get the very same molecular formula that we got at the very beginning of this video, that same C8H10N4O2. 
So pretty neat. We can go from a percentage composition to an empirical formula and then to a molecular formula as well. Let's try another example. Let's say we have a compound that contains nitrogen and oxygen and it's analyzed and it contains 25.93% nitrogen and 74.07% .07 oxygen. What is the empirical formula of this compound? So once again, we're going to set these up. Those percentages will be written as grams. So I have 25.93 grams of nitrogen and 74.04 grams of oxygen. Now once again, what's the first step that we have to do? We convert to moles. If you have something that's not in moles, a good suggestion would be to convert to moles as your first step, right? Just like we did before. So we're going to set these up here. And in the first one, we know nitrogen is about 14.0 uh, grams per mole. And so that is about 1.852 moles. When we convert the number of grams of oxygen to moles, we're going to use the 16 grams in a mole. And when we divide, that's 4.629 moles. So we have these mole values. What's the next step that we do? We have to divide by the smallest of those two numbers. And in this case, the smaller of those two numbers is the 1.852. So we're going to divide both of those by 1.852. And when we do that, nitrogen, of course, is 1. And oxygen, I get, is 2.50. Now, you know, this, this is right in between a 2 and a 3. And so, to me, it sounds like that n is a 1. But, the, oh, you know, don't just round that up to 3 or round it down to 2. It's smack dab in the middle. So we're going to call this 2 and a half. You know, to me, that jumps out as an obvious fraction. Of course, we know that we can't have fractional um, subscripts in a, in a compound. So what we're going to do to make these whole numbers will be to multiply both of these subscripts by that common denominator. So there's a there's a 2 right here. I'm going to multiply both of these, the 1 and the 2 and a half, by the 2. So when I multiply these by 2, I get N2O5. And so that's the, the empirical formula for this compound. So sometimes it's not quite as straightforward, and you have that last little step. So for example, if you see a, a 2.50 or something very close to that, like a 2.49 or a 2.51, you know, that's a two and a half. If you ever see something that's a, well, let's say a 4.33 or a 4.32 or a 4.34, well, that sounds like a third, doesn't it? So we can call that four and a third, in which case you'd multiply all of your uh, potential subscripts by the common denominator of three in that case. So this is how you solve empirical formula problems. And of course, we got a nice little review of percent mass as well. And we got empirical formula and how to find the molecular formula as well. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel where I hope to have the entire AP Chemistry curriculum here on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and join me again where we can learn some more chemistry together.